is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Detroit. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. Last night, Mother Nature washed away Justin Verlander's start against the New York Yankees, but that's all right. Better late than never. Better weather today, and that's good news for JV. He'll take the hill as we bring you baseball from Comerica Park today. It's the Detroit Tigers and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pemba alongside Kirk Gibson. Glad to have you with us here for game one in this two-game home-and-home home between the Tigers and the Buckos. And when these two teams get together, Kirk, two of the better players in the game. Well, they are, and you know, this is a big day, a big 10 day span for the Tigers. They go to Pittsburgh here, home and home and home, Houston, Kansas City. And those are all playoff teams, and they have good players on there, very good players. In fact, as you say, two MVPs. You got Miguel Cabrera from the Tigers, and boy, he's done it. Just look at his numbers over the years. This is a 13 year career, averages 150 games. He's got a triple crown, he's got the two MVPs, all star games, silver sluggers. And, uh, you know, I had a chance to uh, talk to Brad today about Miguel, and he says he's a big kid in a big body that has big impact on any game. And I uh, also got a chance to spend some time with Miggy Dunn in spring training. He has a very infectious personality, and that's good for the teams. Must keep him healthy for the Tigers to have a chance to win a World Series. All right, now the other guy in this series that has big game as well is Andrew McCutcheon, a terrific two-way player. Well, he's an MVP as well. He does it all. He's a great athlete. He knows how to play the game. He runs, he throws, he hits. He's got a lightning quick bat. Hits the ball to all fields. He can run as well. He'll, he will steal third base. He keeps you on your toes. He's kind of a quiet guy in the public. You, there you see, he's not afraid to get dirty. Kind of a quiet guy in the public. But I did hear last year when the Pirates were struggling, he called himself out. That's how you only hear him do. In, in term, calling his teammates out, telling them to look in the mirror. They did and made it into the playoffs. All right, after a short break, we'll send you back to the Call Sam Studios. Check in with Matt Shepard. Coming up in this one today, one Tiger that's off to a red hot start. Ian Kinsler, he's been crushing. Tigers, Pirates, game one. Stay with us next.
but we're pleased to report there is no rain at the ballpark today. We will have baseball, the Tigers and the Pirates. The field conditions are presented by Ace Hardware and the Scotts Company. It's 56 degrees out here today, which seems really balmy compared to the last couple of days. A little bit of humidity, mostly cloudy today. The Tigers and the Pirates getting set to do battle here today. The starting lineup for the visiting Pittsburgh Pirates presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. John Jaso will lead off. He's the first baseman. Andrew McCutcheon has had a terrific career, 298 career hitter. He is in center field, followed by Joyce, the DH, starting Marte is in left. Cervelli will catch. Polanco is in right. Harrison, Sean Rodriguez, and Jordy Mercer rounding out the lineup. And they are facing Justin Verlander, presented today by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Well, JP throwing on an extra day's rest. Uh, that, that's, that works out good having the rain delay. Six innings pitch, three hits, three runs, and his no decision versus the Marlins had no no stuff through five. But uh, like as you say, the weather's no snow in the forecast, so good good day to play and, and, and pitch a baseball. A little bit of a breeze blowing out toward left field as John Jaso steps in. The Bernstein advantage gives you the scouting report on Justin Verlander and John Jaso, and Jaso has had his struggles against JV. The JV has the edge. And here we go. The first pitch of today's ball game is a strike call to the outer edge. Just underway here at Comerica Park. Jaso McCutcheon and Joyce. Jaso has been on base in his first six consecutive games. That wide open stance for the Pirates. And JV missing outside. Run the count to one ball and one strike. Take a look. Uh, Jaso, one of the few players that the Tigers will probably shift today. They have that magic web out there behind second base to try and scoop up the ground ball. Two balls and one strike. Jaso, in his first year with the Pirates, was signed as a free agent in December from the Tampa Bay Rays. High on base percentage guy. Has been his entire career. That's uh, one of the reasons you see Andrew McCutcheon, who's on deck, will be hitting second because he wants to get him more at bats behind Jaso. He'll go the other way and slap it toward left field. Looks like extra bases for Jaso. And he is going to start this ball game with a leadoff double. So they shifted against him. He went the other way. He got a pitch on the outside part of the plate. Didn't do, try to do too much uh, with it. Again, this is what the shifts are doing. It's making some of the good hitters in the major leagues evolve, be able to take advantage of a situation like Jaso just did. Jaso now has been on base in all seven games so far this year, and he sets the table for Andrew McCutcheon. Well, we said a lot about this guy in the open. See only three for 15 off JV, but uh, just your complete player. He's actually the backbone of this team. No balls, one strike on McCutcheon. You know, you kind of look at correspondence. Clint Hurdle came over to Pittsburgh from being a batting coach uh, with Texas. First two years, kind of getting his system in place. And while, while the same as Andrew McCutcheon becoming a good major league player, now the last three years winning records, McCutcheon has taken off and they've been into the playoffs. Well, these Pirates have, as you mentioned, been in the playoffs each of the last three seasons. This is a Pittsburgh team that, uh, for a while, really struggled to get into the postseason. They had a 20-year drought for postseason play. Yeah, Clint's done a good job. He learned a lot when he was in uh, Colorado and uh, changed his way of thinking to into the metrics, used them to his advantage. Fly ball to center with Tyler Collins is waiting. He'll back up on it. Jaso will tag. He's coming to third base. Here's the throw, and he's in there safely. And ball actually hit Jaso as he slides into the bag. Yeah, pretty good read by Jaso. I thought he might uh, have left a little bit early. You see, he held himself up, but this is always a risk when you're getting the throw from the outfield that it can hit the runner. Good job by JV getting it over there to back it up as well. So the fly ball advances the runner to third base. Collins getting the start in center today. His first start of the year in place of Anthony Ghost. Here is the former Tiger Matt Joyce. Well he's in the lineup today. You see he's six for 17 with a couple of home runs off of Justin Verlander. 
runs. And it's interesting to see the Tigers play the infield in here in the first inning. Yeah, they've done that a lot uh, recently. They the first inning you want to put the pressure on the hitter. Try and cut that run down at the plate. Strike one to Joyce. Matt broke into the big leagues with the Tigers several years back. He was a first round pick of the Tigers. A 12th round pick I should say the Tigers that was back in 05. So it's been a while since he's been in the system. James McCann calling signals again today. And JV missing inside one ball one strike. Yeah Matt Joyce I think he probably would have wished he could stay with the Tigers. He went to Florida Southern which is right there in Lakeland. So he liked that arrangement it was very comfortable but he's went down to Tampa. Had a pretty good career. Pure outfielder. Pretty all, good spring too. Hit four home runs. Yeah with all the right handed hitters on the Pirates helps them balance their lineup out. Two and one now on Joyce. Tigers come into this game with a record of three and one. The Pirates started four and oh but they're now four and two. Had a tough uh, series down there in Cincinnati. Cincinnati snuck up on them. Surprised them a little bit. Won the series. Those Reds are off to a nice start. Over in the National League. Two and one on Matt Joyce. And that's in there two and two. Behind the count JV goes with the breaking ball. Breaks right into the zone. Verlander an outstanding effort in his first start on opening day in Miami had a no hitter into the sixth inning in that game. And a ground ball base hit the other way a base hit scores the run to make it one nothing Pittsburgh. So Joyce gets his old teammates with an RBI hit. And this is what uh, hurts you when you bring the infield in. This is a uh, routine ground ball again the ball on the outside part of the plate. Joyce does a good job of just going with the pitch. Infield's in. Iglesias has no chance at this. Pretty good button pushing there by Clint Hurdle with Joyce having good numbers against Verlander. He stuck him in the lineup today and he produces immediately. Got a smile on his face. Clint is a very positive person. He's gone through many things in his life that uh, has really changed and he's full of positivity and something to build off of. Are you of the belief that the manager's temperaments can uh, seep down into the team and into the clubhouse? I think that uh, there is a new way, a new belief. Yeah. I think that uh, back in the day there was probably more constructive criticism um, in a firm way. I think you kind of think it out a little bit how you want to approach subjects uh, nowadays, and it's not so much even that. It's just. The positivity, the positive comments, the positive questions that a manager can ask uh, to develop a relationship so you get closer, and then everybody's more open to each other's ideas. And Starling Marte, the batter here. One nothing. Pirates have the lead just underway from Comerica. Well, it certainly has worked for the Pirates in the postseason each of the last three years, although they ran into Jake Arrieta in the wild card game last year. It's low and away one ball one strike. Verlander career against the Pirates is four and one. And a really good ERA of three point zero zero a lot of strikeouts against the Pirates hitters. The last few years. He's done well in postseason and in, uh, interleague as well. Numbers show that. Take a look at the, the most dependable brought to you by Chevy Justin Verlander best in the major leagues. Interleague win percentage up there at the top 893. Those numbers since 97 the first year of interleague play. We'll keep an eye on Matt Joyce at first base a couple of hits here for the Pirates and they've got themselves a one nothing lead. Starling Marte is off to a 292 start. He has one home run this year. 
It's fouled back out of play. That's close. That's uh, about what 10 15 feet to your right. We got a little bet up here who's going to get the first foul ball this season. The consensus is you. Well, I'll be ready to duck. Yeah, run. We'll try. We'll try and scoop it up. Not afraid to admit it either. Yeah, nothing wrong with that, right? That's right. I'd do it. <laughs> two and two on Marte. Two eighty seven hitter last year for the Pirates. He'll take low and away. Now JV has gone full at three and two. What do you think here with Matt Joyce with one out to start the runner? Yeah, I think they probably will. Get the lead uh, early in the first inning. I think you relax a little bit. You want to keep the pressure on. Here's the 3 2 runner goes. And he got him strike three. Throw down his second tag in time. James McCann strike him out, throw him out. Terrific throw with the Tigers backstop. But Ian Kinsler getting set to start things off for the Tigers. Their starting lineup today is presented by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Kinsler has been red hot. Justin Upton, meanwhile, against the Pirates since 14. Really good numbers. Cabrera, Victor Martinez, then J.D. and Wright. Castellanos back at third. McCann, Collins, and Iglesias rounding it out for the Tigers. And they are facing the former Met, Jonathan Neese. Well, he's uh, actually coming out of the bullpen last year uh, while they were in the playoffs. Now back as a starter. No decision versus the Cardinals in his first start. Five innings. Did give up four runs. Seven strikeouts. Uh, mixes his pitches in well. Throws four different pitches. Fastball, slider, change. 6-3-2-15. Born in Lima, Ohio. Oh. Went to high school in Defiance, Ohio. Kinsler looks at strike one. Upton and then Cabrera to follow here in the bottom of the first. One ball, one strike on Ian, who has hit safely in all four so far this year. The niece to the right handed hitters. He likes to pound that ball inside. He's got a little cutter that he'll throw in there as well. Try and set up the outside part of the plate. Nice giving his days with the Mets showed signs that he could be a really good big league pitcher. He did finish his Mets career though at 500. 2 1 is tap foul. Well, yeah, he was, uh, you know, drafted way back and, you know, didn't, it's, that's a hard place to play. There's yeah. a lot of expectations over there. He had a pretty good, uh, pretty good career over there, but never took off as expected. And uh, I know he took some parting shots a little bit, uh, said it was good to feel wanted when he signed with the Pirates. Says he's got a fe good feeling about it. Ball is hit hard, but straight at McCutcheon for the first out. 
Let's take a look at the Pirates' starting defense brought to you by Tim Horton, Starling Marte, McCutcheon, and Polanco in the outfield. Sean Rodriguez at third, Jody Mercer and Josh Harrison up the middle, John Jaso at first, Jonathan Neese throwing to Francisco Cervelli catching. Well, here's a guy the Tigers want to get going. That would be Justin Upton, who came on toward the end of spring training. He is just four for 19 to start the year, though. And Upton looks at a strike. It's Justin, a three time All Star, first year in the American League. Here's the 0 1. You know, with interleague play now, really from the start of the season all the way to the end of the season, Kirk, I'm not sure the transition from NL to AL or vice versa makes as big a difference as maybe it had in the past. Well, I think the approach. Uh the teams are set up better to work in interleague play or they will set it up if it's a like towards the end of the year you'll have call ups in September so we finish in Atlanta but the pitchers I think take it much more seriously too as far as handling the bat and all those things one and two on Upton you don't want that pitcher to just be an out slice toward right but foul. Upton looking for that first home run as a Tiger, that first RBI as well. And that cutie is uh, a little bit warmer today than she probably would have been if she was at the ballpark the last two days. Last night's game washed out. A little bit inside, two balls, two strikes on Upton. Big fella waiting on deck, that would be Miguel Cabrera. Nice works at a nice pace, but he missed outside. 3 2 now on Justin. Nice uh, call there by Ron Culpa, the home plate umpire. Nice one inside on the corner, just off, and one just off the outside corner. Gives Jay up the benefit. Swing and a miss. It gets through the catcher, Cervelli, and Upton's going to make it to first. Well, we were thinking there in the top of the first inning, JV just cut it off. Here he gets the strikeout and the throwout. James McCann continues to throw bullets down there, and uh, I haven't seen an inaccurate throw yet by James McCann. That's his, his strength. You see a decent jump by Jaso, but he gets JV out of the inning. Tigers up to bat, and uh, got Justin Upton with a little break on the strikeout here. Pass ball with making up. Oh, McCann three out of four and catching runners in the early season. So he is uh, sending out a little statement to the rest of the league run at your own risk. Miggy is batting 313 one home run hit it against the Yankees earlier on this homestand. And he shoots a ground ball towards short looks like a double play ball Mercer on to second Harrison with the relay and a 6 4 3.
Football on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank. Raise your expectations of what a bank can be. When it's time, come to Comerica. See your Jeep dealer today and experience the freedom that comes with legendary capability. And by Kroger. Back here at Comerica Park as we go to inning number two. The Pirates have a one nothing lead. Fans not quite as bundled up as they had been the past couple of days here. Heat wave. Heat wave indeed. Feels good. It does. Summer will be here before you know it. We hope. Flowers can come back out. Here is Francisco Cervelli to begin things for the Pirates. Oh. It'll be Cervelli, Polanco, and Harrison. Pirates got a pretty good catching crew. Uh, Cervelli and Stewart behind the Chris Stewart behind the dish couple of veteran guys. Chris Stewart's been well traveled on very good organizations. Cervelli was over there with the Yankees for many years was backing up a pretty good catcher wasn't he? Jorge Posada was awfully good. You probably learned a few things uh, catching behind Posada. Yeah he's uh, Cervelli's solid. Been a backup but now uh, hit 295 last year for the Pirates. Here's the 1 1. Ooh, big swing there as JV comes up with a high heat. Looks like he uh, climbed the ladder a little bit right here. So belly swinging underneath. The hitter, not many hitters, you're going to catch up with many pitches up that high if you're going to swing at them. But you do so because they look good. Here's the one two. He went up there again to see if Cervelli would chase, but no dice. Justin's fastball velocity early on here in the low 90s. I think as uh, his he gets a couple starts under your belt, you're going to see his below climb a little bit. Outside. Ooh, just missed the outside corner. Well, as I said, Ooh. Ron Culpa, he's got a tight zone. It's got to be on the plate. That looks like it might have been an inch off. Not getting the call either pitcher so far. Full count. Big rip there by Cervelli. Talked about that start that Verlander made against the Marlins in Miami to get things going. Had that no hitter going into the sixth inning. He was touched up by that home run from Giancarlo Stanton. Tigers would eventually win that game in extra innings. Uh, but Justin got off to a really good start. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Well, JV went with the fastball in, then away. Now he throws the curveball. Three balls, and two strikes. Gets him. Let's take a look at Tiger's starting defense present, presented by Beaumont Health. Jay up and left. Tyler Collins, first start in center. JD Martinez in right. Iglesias and Kinsler up the middle with James McCann behind the plate. Nick Castellanos at third and Mickey at first. Justin Verlander on the mound. Well, here is Gregory Polanco, who just a couple of days ago was signed to a five year extension by the Pirates. They've identified him as one of the bright young stars in this game that they want to keep in Bucko colors for years. 535. Pretty good numbers for well, a youngster. You know, it's uh, you know, what it. do you want to do? Because they're basically controllable for the first three years, which they're going to make. Oh! Less around the minimum, then after that, then go to arbitration and make some money. But he's only really had a couple of years, so he's a year away from arbitration. And of course, the teams want to take you past free agency if you can and have that cost certainty. And this will allow them to go out on the market and get a more veteran player in the future. Yeah, the business side of the game. Oh, that ball is shot right by Cabrera down the line. Got to be extra bases. Polanco motoring towards second, and he's going to pull in with a double. Miggy very nearly came up with that ball. Second double of the game for the Pirates. Well, he likes to pull the ball right here, and that's a rocket. Miggy almost had it, almost missed the bag. I thought he had a big old. He's a, this is the big fella. Oh, he had it on the backside right there. He's about 6'5". Kind of reminds me of the Cobra. 
Dave Parker? Yeah. Dave Parker is one of the funniest men I've ever uh, encountered in baseball. I think Dave Parker and I have something in common. Do you know that? That would be? Parky. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. He makes, uh, he has a good personality about it. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do is right. Josh Harrison, the batter. Harrison at 240 this year made an all star team last year. And uh, these two, Harrison and Verlander, have a little bit of history. You might recall several years ago in the 2012 season, Harrison broke up a Verlander no hitter in the 10th inning, or the ninth inning, rather. There's a bluff to second base. And yeah, you want to keep an eye on Polanco. This guy uh, came up uh, kind of as a utility player, and uh, he signed as well. But uh, he, he can play anywhere on the diamond. Very solid player. Gets dirty. Coming at you all the time. JV pumps in a strike 1 1. And that fastball now up to 93 for Verlander. Harrison, very versatile player. Playing at second base today. Hey, that uh, takes a unique athlete to be able to play all these different positions and feel comfortable and be efficient at them. One and two. Might have got one just a little off right here. First one we see. And we got that one is right. Good job by McCann. You saw the late finish with the glove. Just move. You want to move that ball it, when it hits your glove towards the strike zone. Great example of what Brad Ausmus was talking to the media about before the game today and how McCann is improving in that respect. And it's all more so how you receive the ball in terms of how you catch the ball, which way your glove is angled. He had it angled perfectly there as to where the ball was riding in and the glove was riding into the strike zone. The one two. And I guess Kirk those are pitches that can really when you multiply them over the course of the year can really begin to make a difference and that's why we're paying more attention to pitch frame. Well Brad's always thinking because uh, the numbers are what they are and as you said you want to move the ball towards into the middle of the strike zone after you catch it. You don't want that arm showing you want to you want to kind of disguise the fact that you're doing that and uh, depends on what side of the plate you're on you might set up differently on different sides of the plate. But there he goes. Burr goes to third broken bat roller towards short Iglesias going to have no play. Everybody is sick. Well Polanco's on his way and Harrison <laughs> trying to protect him. He just gets sawed off right there. We can call La Cocina in the kitchen. And uh, no play by Iglesias. He was just hoping Polanco would make the big turn and we could get it out. But uh, nevertheless didn't work out. First to third now with one out. Infield hit for Josh Harrison. That'll be the fourth hit of the game for the Pirates. Here's Sean Rodriguez playing at third base today. Pirates are still without Jung Ho Gung, who really kind of burst out of the big league scene last year. Played some short for them, some third base as well. Gung was hurt last year and so he's been a void in their lineup here in the early part of the season. They expect him back late April. Verlander trying to pitch out of a jam here in the second. Runners at the corners, one out. Looking for a nice double play ball right here. 6 4 3. Oh. Strike call. Said injury last year to Gung. That's Chris Conglin down at second base with the slide into the bag, and that broke Gung's leg. Yeah, and you can see the leg was planted down there. Again, we have a rule now that's aimed to protect these types of injuries. So, rather a sizable loss for the Pirates here in the early season, but again, they hope to get him back late April. Good block there by McCann. 1 1. 
You know that rule I, I, I hear a lot of talk about it the slide rule. Uh, there's, there's great intent behind it. Uh, a lot of people don't like it for the, the other reasons. You think that you're taking something away from the game. There is a responsibility for the middle infielder to get out of the way as well. I mean, you can't just stand there and like he he he, he just dared him to slide on him there, and you had a bad you had a bad injury. I mean, if you're a runner, and you're going down there, and you see that you're going to go after him. Not anymore. A one one. We touched on this rule a couple of days ago on the telecast where you have to make a bona fide slide into second base. You have to make contact with the dirt, stay on the bag. Uh, but again, as we talked about, Gibby, you mean all these years of how you're taught to go into second base hard to break up a double play, those are hard instincts and habits to break. They are, but uh, over time, you're going to get more used to it. You're, I mean, when you go down there and you're out, and it's an automatic double play. You will. Gradually learn the, less, the lesson the hard way, and you're going to adjust the way you go into the bag. I mean, you have to go right into the bag. You have to stay on the bag. You can't throw the leg out like you used to. It's just pretty clear. Big swing there by Rodriguez. Two and two on the Pirates' third baseman. Another count. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if Clint Hurdle puts a the runner in motion here again. 2-2 two is a pretty good count. Certainly 3-2. It seems like they want to put some pressure on Verlander and the Tigers. Ball high to run it full now 3-2. Well at 3-2 now you would expect that uh, Harrison would be going. I do. Rodriguez handles the bat pretty good. Good time for a line drive and a double play. I'd even take another strike him out throw him out. Yeah I would hold the ball if I was Justin right here. Try and make sure he doesn't get a great jump. Or throw over that a boy. Now many pitchers that's hard to do you get into the situation first and third three two count a lot of pitchers. They want to, they can't multi multitask in these situations but Justin obviously has a lot of experience. You expect a guy like him to do that and uh, a guy like Zach Grinke he would do it. Runner goes and it's lying foul down the right field line. Now this works on a pitcher's selection. You know he's going. You anticipate he's going to go again. So maybe you throw that heater. That's one of the reasons why as an opponent you want to continue to pressure your opponent. That was the 20th pitch for Verlander in this inning. He's up to 38 for the game now. Oh, a throw to third base. Now that's a great play right there. The Tigers put that in in spring training. They're hoping that the runner, because you can't fake to third and throw to first, so you have to throw the ball to third. So the intent is to get this guy going. When you throw to third, then you get him in the rundown and you you get the out. Pirates have scouted the Tigers. Runner goes, and it's fouled away again. That really is a great play because what did that rule change where you can't go up to third and go to first set a couple of years ago? Yeah, it was either a year or two ago. Yeah, and so this is kind of an offshoot of that to, I mean, it's not done very often, but you try and get that runner at first napping or being more aggressive than uh, he had hoped. Yeah, well, Josh Harrison is a very smart base runner. He's not biting on that, but you'll get quite a few. I'll, I'll, I'll predict they're going to get it up to five people this year on that play. Maybe not five, but. This will make him not get a good jump as well. He's got to make sure that he goes home. Again, the runner goes, and again, Rodriguez follows it away. JV up to 94 there. You can tell that Rodriguez is uh, making sure and safeguarding against an off speed pitch here. 40 pitches, 24 strikes so far for Verlander. This will be the ninth pitch in this at bat. So Rodriguez making Verlander work heavily here in the second. Two on one out. Again the runner goes and he lost him ball four. What an at bat there by Sean Rodriguez. Ten pitches. It's going to load him up. 
A nine pitch at bat. It'll bring up Jordy Mercer. Pirates already have four hits in the ball game. Mercer batting 238. You want to make sure you don't lay one in there. This guy, he can, he's got a dangerous bat. Polanco, Harrison, and Rodriguez, your base runners, third to first. And Mercer fouls one away. Mercer is over his last eight. Had a walk-off winner on Tuesday for the Pirates. We mentioned they started the season four and zero, oh and then lost a couple of games to the Red Hot Reds over in the National League. I don't think many people thought the Reds were going to get too hot this year, but uh, big turnover turnover over there. Jay Bruce is still there. Brandon Phillips is still there. There is some thought that by the All-Star break, or many thought that those two guys would be departing for other organizations. Joey Votto as well, still at the first baseman. The 0-1. Oh, good pitch. 0-2. See the breaking ball there. He's got it out front. Good depth. Comes down. Catches the top of the zone. See McCann again just holding that ball there for Ronnie Culpa to make the call. So Mercer now is in an 0 2 hole with the bases loaded, one out. Fouled away. Pirates doing a very good job early in this game of fouling good pitches made by Verlander off. But you know what? That's kind of been the M.O. against Verlander over the years. So many teams have been able to drive his pitch count up because of all these foul balls. Well, here we have the pitches by inning. Only one out so far here in the second. That last fastball at 94. So Justin gaining some velocity here in the second. Pirates got a run in the first on a double by Jay So a single by Joyce. And they are looking for more here in the second. Pulled it foul. Mercer's uh, seen the fastball and the curveball now. See if JT or JV uh, switches it up. John Jaso waiting on deck. I think you could use that breaking book pitch. You want to see if you can get him to chase. And right now, Mercer in protection mode sends one back into seats. Do we have a catch there? Apparently somebody made a great play. There you go. Nicely done. Good shot there, guys. There's a baseball fan for life. That's cool. Real cool. Meanwhile, Verlander having trouble dispatching Jordy Mercer. And another foul. 95 that time from JV, and yet the pitch count continues to elevate. He's at 47 now. So the Pirates doing a really good job of trying to wear him down early. And JV just has to keep making good pitches. It's frustrating, you know, who's going to give? Nobody wants to, you know that. Line drive back up the middle into center field. One run is in. That's Polanco. Harrison right behind them. Throw comes into third. It's a two run single. Jordy Mercer with a terrific at bat. And the Pirates now lead three to nothing. Mercer uh, picking up JB really good right here. He's trying to get that ball down and away. Tried to get a chase pitch right there, but he left it up a little bit. Mercer right up the middle. Lucky that did not hit Justin. Went right by. 
old Chuck and Duck. That sent Verlander sprawling to the turf. Rich Duby is out now to have a talk with him. That came back hot. RBIs three and four on the season for their number nine hitter, Jordy Mercer. And the Pirates already have five hits. Still only one out of the inning. That'll bring up John Jaso, the top of the lineup. Well, let's take a look. We've been showing the third base coach. Let's keep an eye right here. He's starting down here. Multiple runners. It's a kind of a juggling act. You know the guy from second's going to score. Do you you may stop him. If you do, you got to be watching right here. There you can see a good read and a return back to second base. So here is Jaso. Double to start the game and scored their first run. Three nothing. Pirates have the early lead here. Ball one. Now, if you were a hitting instructor, I'm not sure that John Jaso's batting stance is one that you would probably teach to youngsters, but it works for him. You don't think he'd pass it on to somebody else? <laughs> no. But you know, uh, Whatever works for you, the mechanics of your load, getting your front foot down, and having your hands in a good ready position is all that matters. Where you start is irrelevant. Runner back at second. So and it's unusual because when you have so far to go with your legs and your arms, and the more movement you have, it's harder to coordinate it. So that's probably why you don't see this too often, but. He likes it. It's what works for him. Sometimes you have to do something like like that so you don't lunge at the ball. It's a timing mechanism. You want your eyes straight towards the pitcher. It's almost as if Jaso's shoulders are square toward Verlander as he starts his windup. And he's trying to get a good look. We mentioned that he's been a very good on base percentage guy for his career, a 361 on base percentage. You can see he's open right there, way back. In the air toward left center field, Collins is on the run, still going, and he'll run it down at the warning track. Ball hit hard, but Tyler Collins tracks it down. Well, let's see how it works. He starts way open, he taps that toe, and then he's going to close back up. And I want you to watch when that front foot comes down, where those hands are, how his balance is. That's all that matters. But it is a tough one to time up. I'll give you that. Right there. Behind the ball. Put a good charge in it, but uh, Tyler Collins running it down. And as you say, it works for him. So with two outs, here is Andrew McCutcheon. And he'll look at a strike 0 1. McCutcheon with a sour look for Ron Culpa. Kind of looking at some of that hair piece right there. I was thinking that hairpiece would look really good on you. Well, what about you? Well, what should I share? <laughs> it's called the kettle black, I guess. <laughs> Looks like he. Well, I, I won't comment anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the hair works for him as well. One ball, one strike on McCutcheon. A couple of years ago, McCutcheon had the dreadlocks, but yep. he's tightened it up. Yeah, he has. Fly to center field his first time up advancing a runner. Pirates have two more here in the second. They lead three to nothing. One and two. Starts it off at McCutcheon's shoulder. You can see him sit down on it. Fools him a little bit. You don't want to repeat that. This is a very smart hitter. He will make the adjustment. And so far, at JV's had a pretty good breaking ball early in this game. He's gone ahead of McCutcheon. <laughs> and he pops it up. Left side of the infield. Castellanos to the grass. Inning over. Pirates get two more, though, and they lead 3-0.
Tigers live following the game. We select the Fox Sports Detroit Tigers player of the game. Presented by McDonald's. Stop by for your breakfast favorites now being served all day. That's Twitterverse there, huh? How's it, how's it been going on there for you? Twitterverse? Yeah. We're going great. A lot, lot, acti lot of activity? A lot of activity. The social media things are, they got all kinds of things to do. What are you up to, like eight or nine tweets now? I'm not counting. You're not counting? You've only been on Twitter for like, what, oh. five, six years? Yeah, well. <laughs> Pretty low average. Nothing wrong with that. Here is Victor Martinez to lead it off. Then JD and Nick Castellanos facing Jonathan Nice. One ball, one strike. Well, in that first inning, uh, Nice really using that ball on the inside part of the plate to set up all of his other pitches. Got Justin up, uh, Upton on the slider down and in, and Miggy on a cutter in. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell the difference between a slider and a cutter. Yeah. Slider should move a little bit more and have more depth. Here's the 2 1. Chopper to the shortstop, Mercer. And Martinez is out. One gone in the Tiger second. It's going to bring up JD Martinez. Three thirteen average so far for JD's hit safely in four straight. No damage yet, but uh, any time it will come. No home runs or RBIs. It's Tigers offense. It's pretty hard to get going when it's been as cold as it's been. Now it's going to warm up this week. Hopefully, get back on track. Here's the 0 1. One ball and one strike. Do you think pitchers hate to pitch in cold weather more or hitters hate to hit in cold weather more? Uh, Is there an advantage there either way, I guess, to the question? I think that pitchers are going to be the warmest. Yeah. So they're throwing the ball all the time. That probably varies from person to person. Here's the 2 1 pitch. 3 and 1 on JD Martinez. Jonathan Nice in his first start. He up a few hits and a few runs. Coming in again. Toward the left fielder. And caught there by Starling Marte. Two gone. We'll see a clash of MVPs when Miguel Cabrera and the Tigers face Andrew McCutcheon and the Pirates tomorrow again at 1.10 p.m. For tickets, visit Tigers.com or call 866-66-TIGER. Two of the really great players in this game, Cabrera and McCutcheon, they get it done in different ways, but they're both very, very productive. That's driven toward right field. He put a charge into that ball. It is up. And that ball is going to go. Castellanos goes the other way with a solo shot here in the second. Boy, Nick put a charge into that. Yes, he did, and he jumped him. Uh, nice came with a the fastball. They're trying to get that quick strike out of him, and uh, Nick was ready for it. Out over the plate just enough. Doesn't try and pull it. Seems like Nice is getting some brown balls. You want to make sure you stay up the middle. Castellanos does so here. Out of help. Castellanos is now five for six on the homestand. Had that four hit game a few days ago. He's liking the chilly weather. He Got is. Heated up. He's a South Florida kid, but it doesn't matter. The 0 1 to McCann. Flared in the air toward right. Polanco coming in, and that will retire the side. Tigers get on the board thanks to Nick.
Go to the top of the third now here at Comerica Park. And just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in today's game. Brought to you by Miller Light, of course. Nick Castellanos has put the Tigers on the board with an opposite field home run. Good answer. Always good to come back when you give up some runs. For Castellanos, his first of the year. And now he's going to move over to the right side as they shift against Matt Joyce. Joyce, however, was not bothered by the shift. He singled the other way his first time up. Marte and then Cervelli to follow for the Pirates. Swing and a miss, 0 so 1. Here's a good look at the Tigers' defensive alignment. You got to see a lot of data to put that setup. Try and defend your opponent that way. You got to have feel pretty confident that he's going to hit it in there. I mean, this is three guys right here expecting this right here. It's Nick Castellanos over there playing second base, deep right field. Good change up there, JV. Uh, bringing it all out there. You can see the grip. Good action. Well out in front. See him come in this time. Another change up. Rip to right field, and that ball is going to get down and go to the corner. Joyce will have his second hit of the game as he pulls one to the corner and right for a double. Pirates add another hit. Pirates have done a good job of making the adjustment. Previous pitch, Joyce is way out in front. JV gets that up a little more than he wanted it to be. And Joyce is able to pull it down into the corner for a leadoff double. It'll be the sixth hit of the day for Pittsburgh. Here is Starling Marte. The strikeout victim to close out the first inning to strike him out throw him out and at that frame. Ball one. Marte had a really good year last year. 287 with 19 homers. A little pop up sailing away from Cabrera into the seats. Another nice play. Fans got their A game today. They do. Marte last year knocked in 81 runs. He hit a grand slam on Friday. Here's the 1 1. Another foul back out of play. 1 and 2 on Marte. Last year the Pirates in the National League were fourth in the league in hits and runs scored. They also rode their pitching last year too which was really good into the postseason. Unfortunately for them they were stuck in the same division with the Cardinals. who won over 100 games last year. I tell you they're pitching they do a good job. Everybody wants to know what is it that they do different. Uh, I think they're very effective at using both sides of the plate. They move off both sides of the plate as well. They're not afraid to throw inside. Ray Searage has become very well respected, their pitching coach. Now the one two. Bouncing ball right side. This will advance the runner. JV covers for the out. One away. Time for a game break now. Here's Mickey York. Looking forward to it, Mick. Thank you. 
Here is Cervelli now. The Tigers will pull the infield in a couple of steps. That was a really good at bat by Starling Marte. It kind of shows you who the Pittsburgh Pirates are. Totally gave himself up. Forced that ball over to the right side of the diamond, advancing. Matt Joyce to third. And now it sets up Cervelli with a chance to get that run back they gave up on the Castellanos home run. You have to bring the infield in now, not down by a couple of runs. You want to try and keep Pittsburgh from scoring any more runs so you can get back in this game. Cervelli struck out against Verlander in the second. Two balls, no strikes. I believe he got him on a breaking pitch, didn't he? He did. Cervelli has been on base in five consecutive games. Seven years with the New York Yankees. Prior to coming to Pittsburgh. High drive deep into right field. J.D. Martinez going back to the track to make the catch. That'll get the run in. Cervelli gets it done, and the Pirates add another. See the importance there of the ground out by Marte. Yeah, just another great approach. Good at bat. Got ahead in the count. 2-0 count, and uh, JB's got to throw a strike, and they get the run in. 4-1 ball game now. Pirates in the lead. Here is Polanco. Two base hit run scored in his last at bat. Fouled away on one. We'll say this the Pirates doing a pretty good job of squaring up some balls here against Verlander in this game. They've had good at bats against him. You got to give him some credit. You know Justin's going to want to stay in this game. He's got a fairly high pitch count here just into the top of the third inning. Yeah, this will be number 68. Check swing roller. Castellanos on the charge. Barehanded play, not in time. Infield hit. That's a tough one. Not much going right for the Tigers right now. Second infield hit. Nick does everything he can, gets around it. Polanco runs pretty good, though. Beats it out. Seven hits for the Pirates, and it'll keep the inning going for Josh Harrison. Look for Blanco to try and steal here. Blanco last year swiped 27 bases. Draws the throw. Doesn't have a very big lead down there. Justin continues to throw over, keep him close. Polanco, one year in the minors, stole as many as 40 bases in a year. And there he goes. Here comes McCann's throw. Tag, got him out at second base. Learned the hard way. James McCann guns down Polanco for the time being. Clint Hurdle wants to take a look at it. Yeah, the tag getting the ball beat him. Oh, I don't know if we're going to win that one. He just may have beaten the tag. That is awfully close. Pirates deciding whether or not they want to use the challenge here. Meanwhile, McCann with another. Solid throw down to second base. He's already caught one runner today. No, he's going to let it go. Going to let think, it go. I think he had a case, but works out good for the Tigers. James McCann again. The McCannon out at second base.
team. James McCann has always kept the notebook. Minor leagues, big leagues, doesn't matter. And look at his percentage now. Pretty good. Four out of five. He's cut him down. Throwing the ball very well. Good job down in spring training getting prepared for the season. Tyler Collins leading it off against Jonathan Neese. Tigers trail four to one. When you have a team, Gibby, that part of your game plan is to run and you go up against a catcher that can throw and is very good as McCann is. I assume you still have to play your game don't you or do you become more choosy. Well I think they feel that they can get Verlander. Um, there was two outs right there Polanco. I think the risk out, uh, the reward outweighed the risk in their mind. So that's why and Polanco is a very aggressive player. So he probably has the green light. He went for it. And he learned his lesson. Collins getting the start in center for Anthony Ghost today. A little chopper foul. Tyler hasn't played in a while. It's a tough assignment. Sit on the bench for a while, come off, get a lefty your first game, but that's the fun of the game. The challenge. It's also a challenge for the manager to find those spots, especially you want to play your, your regulars uh, as, met, as much as you can, but to open the season coming out of spring training, you do have to give the bench a ball. Yeah, you have to do it. It's right for the team. Uh, you need to keep all your players fresh. And Tyler Collins is a very good player. I spent a lot of time with him down there in Lakeland. Knows the game very smart, aggressive. He needs to get himself under control like a lot of guys, but he's a good player. A little bit high, two and two. I love that quote that Brad had in spring training about Collins. Sometimes you have to learn that it's easier to run around the wall than through the wall. Think he knows that yet? Well, if he doesn't, I think he's probably going to start to learn it. I mean, <laughs> you could tell, and you could tell toward the end of September last year, his walks were up. He slowed down the game a little bit. Had a good month of September. Yeah, he belongs, that's for sure. But uh, maybe just add a sometimes to your to your statement there. Sometimes, okay. Strike three, call. And Collins caught looking one gone, because there are times when you have to run through the wall, right? Well, you can at least try. There's some kind of a benefit. Unfortunately, he got a tough pitch right there on the outside corner. He'll get another chance. Here is Jose Iglesias batting in the nine slot today. Really good start for Jose. 438 in the batting average column. Strike one. Tyler Collins, a tough pitch. It's what we call paint right down there on the outside corner. It looks like it was moving off a little bit, but he didn't get the call. Chopper to third, easy play for Sean Rodriguez. Two gone. The now we'll see if Kinsler can get it going. Jonathan Neese, the only blemish to his mark today is the home run by Castellanos. That's it. But if you're going to try and pull Neese uh, and you're a right handed hitter, he's going to either saw you off, break your bat, or you're going to roll over. You may roll over and hit the ground ball. That's why you got to try and stay middle and get, the, get it off your thumbs. So far, throwing a pretty good game for the Pirates. Nice was roughed up in his first start of the year. Gave up five runs in five innings. Did strike out seven though in his start against the Cardinals. Two and zero. Oh. That's in there. Two balls, one strike on Kinsler. Ian pulls that one foul. I will bet that every time Jonathan Neese takes the mound, his defenders love it because he's pretty much one of those guys that forces a pretty good rhythm. He gets it and he throws it. Yeah, he's quick. MLB loves that too, huh? We, they, we hear the fans like quicker games. Yeah. MLB doing all they can to quicken the games up and down goes Kinsler as he goes fishing.
Unlock the games on TV. You can now stream games live on your mobile device. Just go to your app store and download the free Fox Sports Go app. And log on and stream Tigers all games wherever you go. It's as simple as that. You got a lot of apps on your phone. It, more than I care to admit because I only use probably 50% of them. All I do is sit there and take up space. How about you? Well, it's because you have no choice. You, you look something up and they make you almost download it. So you True. do it to make it convenient. Josh Harrison will lead things off as we go to the fourth. Four to one. Pirates have the lead. And there's another base hit down the line. This could be extra bases. Harrison motoring towards second. He lost his helmet. And he's in standing up. And man, these Pirates have their hitting shoes on today. Hit the ball hard on the line right there, the opposite way. Kind of surprised you a little bit. Uses the whole field. I think Shavey's not getting the ball down as far as he'd like so far in this game. Pirates are very aggressive on the pitches up in the zone. That is the fourth double of the afternoon for the Pirates offense. Sean Rodriguez will step in. Same situation last inning for the Pirates. They got a leadoff double, and Marte hit a ground ball to the right side to advance the runner. Rodriguez, I would assume, trying to do the same here to get Harrison to third. Seems like that would be the, the play. Little game cat and mouse now between Harrison and Verlander. Iglesias dancing in behind the runner to try and keep him close. A little bit outside, 1 0. Justin uh, sped up to pace that time. He'd been lifting his leg. His leg kick was a little higher previous to the other runners on second base. Harrison distracting him. Sped it up there, about a 1.2 second leg kick, which is very quick. Sometimes you do that, you leave the ball up in the zone, you don't get it where you want to, though. Missing with that pitch. Ron Culpa yelling something into the Tigers' dugout. Here's the 1 0. Checked it. Strike call. It looked like early in the game he had a tight strike zone and uh, had a couple pitches maybe not so tight. And, uh, Tigers in disagreement with the consistency. Meanwhile, you can see what Harrison is doing, splitting the attention here of Verlander between runner and batter. Good pickup by McCann. Rodriguez showing bunt that time. James McCann, you got to get over there quickly. You see, he gets the shoulders around, the glove. It's great concentration right there by the young catcher. That, that's not hard to pick that you know you have all the different spike marks and there's holes up there home plate you don't really know what way the ball is going to bounce so you try and get your glove as close to the ball where it bounces as you can same situation there he showed bunt and again Verlander snaps one off into the dirt now it's three and one. 75 total only here in the top of the fourth inning. Which means the Tigers will be utilizing their bullpen today. And perhaps a little bit earlier than Brad was hoping to. 3 1 pitch. And he lost in ball four. That'll be the second walk of the game for Sean Rodriguez. And two for JV, both of them to this guy. Now Jordy Mercer. Yeah, really kind of. Puts the manager in a position here. What are you going to do? How far do you want to go with Justin? It's early in the year. He hasn't been beyond 100 pitches yet. Got to protect the iron for the long haul. Now Justin's going to want to stay in the game, but if they get another run here or two, we're going to want to save his bullets for a better day. And yeah, Justin threw 98 in his first start in Miami. Now mid, you get mid-season. 
could be raring to go. Yeah. Could be up over 120. So here is Mercer, two on, nobody out, showing bunts. Strike one. Two run single with two strikes in the count back in the second inning. Four to one Pirates lead here in the fourth. Same two teams here tomorrow. Then they switch locations to PNC Park for two games. Funded. This will get the job done advancing the runners. So Pirates doing a good job of playing situational baseball today. The Tigers had a good idea. He was going to be bunting right there. Now they'll have another decision right here. Do you bring him in? But Miggy's on his way in. Iglesias over to third, but a pretty good bunt. Only play is at first. The Tigers are going to bring that infield in again. That's tough to do when you get second, third, but now they're going to have the middle back. See him retreating. John Jaso double and a fly out. Oh. Bender drops in for a strike. Two on one out for the Pirates looking to add to their four to one lead. Tigers have had only one hit so far today. Here's the 0 1. Jaso sends it back into the seats. JV ahead 0 2. Verlander had that lengthy second inning in which he threw 37 pitches. One of the main reasons that his pitch count is so high right now. Foul oh, balls. Lots of them. A ton of them. There's another one. Just seems like the Pirates are on everything he throws, doesn't it? Yep, everything's hit hard. I mean, even the foul balls are uh, squared up pretty good. I wonder if they got some. When you're a pitcher, a pitching coach, you wonder about things like that. Sometimes there are little things that you're consistently doing on certain pitches and not on others. Follow the way again. So after a start like this, would you go back and look at the tape to see if he is indeed doing something to tip off the other uh, the other team? Well, they'll be looking. Absolutely. Oh, and two on Jaso. Will pop up toward third. Castellanos runs out of room. Yeah. The first couple rows. Yeah, that's a tough pitch to foul off right there. And that put it in play. Falls right on his knuckles. Pulls his hands in and fouls it off anyway. There has been activity in every inning so far for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Checked it high. One and two. Trouble behind Andrew McCutcheon. Jason lets it go by again. Now it's two and two. Looks frustrated right now. You can see why. Going to see somebody get up here pretty soon in the bullpen. I was thinking the same thing. 85 now in the pitch count. Here's the 2-2. Yet another foul ball. The inning started with a double by Harrison. Sean Rodriguez walked. Mercer with a sacrifice. Putting two more Pirates in scoring position. Tigers started the season by winning three straight, lost to the Yankees in game two in the series. 
And they trail here today 4 1 in the fourth. High again, and now from 0 2, we've gone to 3 and 2, and this is what Jaso does best. He does. 96 miles an hour right there. Uh, JV giving everything he's got, but Jaso just picking that pitch up very well. Doesn't bite. This will be the 10th pitch now in this at bat. So he had a 9 pitch, now he's got a 10 pitch. Yeah, two lengthy ones. Here's the 3 2. High fly ball toward left center field. Collins going back. He's under it. This will get the run in. And both runners will advance. It's a sacrifice fly. Pretty good at bat there by John Jaso to drive in a run. What do they do to little things? Yeah, they're playing a pretty solid game right now. It's the second get him over, get him in. That 10 pitches you're talking about right there, that's pretty good at bat. Yeah, and he fell behind 0 2. 5 1 Pirates. Two out chance now for McCutcheon. McCutcheon is flying to center and popped to third. Infield back all the way around now with two outs. In there, strike one. A five time National League All Star is McCutcheon, won the MVP a couple of years ago. In fact, he's been in the top five in MVP voting four times in his career. So while he's only won one, he has been in the conversation a lot. Well respected around both leagues. Play gets him, you understand the importance of who he is towards this Pirates, towards the Pirates club. McCutcheon last year hit 361 with men in scoring position. That is getting it done. The 1 1 pitch drill towards center field. On the move is Collins still going back and he'll track it down again. They'll settle for one run. We go to the bottom of the fourth. We go to the bottom of the fourth and today's game is being broadcast on AFN the American Forces Network broadcasting to the U.S. Armed Forces serving around the world on land and ships at sea. We welcome you all. And the Tigers offense trying to get kick started here as we go to the fourth it'll be Justin Upton. 
Tigers have been out hit 8 1 in this game and trail 5 to 1. His shot at the knees goes back to work. Well, Jayup got uh, struck out in his first at bat. Ball got by on a wild pitch. Did get on base. Threw him the slider. Let's see what he does this time. Heater right there. That's the express 89 miles an hour. One ball, one strike. Just always know he's going to probably go back to that pitch that worked for him in the first at bat when he needs it. Upton Cabrera, Victor Martinez, two, three, four for Brad Osmus. Slow roller foul off his foot. One ball, two strikes. Uh, Justin Upton. Well, I got. I think I see. We've got two broken bats. To try to break Justin's right there. Ball's cutting in in on the hands and the shin of the Tiger right-handers. Nice last year nine and ten with the Mets and an ERA of 4.13. Coming in. Left it up two and two. Uh, you, you, you watch the velocities here from Nice 89 90. He's come in hard. He's going to try try and get that slider into the hands. Ooh, missed the outside corner. Three and two now on Upton. Here's the three two. Drill to left field. That's going to get down. Base hit. Upton takes a wide turn and holds and a leadoff single here in the fourth. Well, let's take a look. Menards brings you the big money of Connor, Andrew McCutcheon, and Miguel Cabrera. Let's compare the numbers. See Miggy way on top in the average in home runs. Two MVPs. Doubles him on the All Star games as well, but. Uh, Pretty good players right here. Both do well for their teams, and neither team can afford to have an injury to either one of these gentlemen. Cabrera hit into a 6 4 3 double play in the first inning. That hit by Upton just the second in the ball game for the Tigers offense. Mickey's pretty good at making adjustments. Now, every pregame pre of every series. Teams have with you know a little scouting report that they give the information to the team, and you can tell the Pirates are very structured in their approach to these Tiger hitters. He missed inside again, two and one. Got a strong wind blowing out toward left field here this afternoon. What are you saying? I'm saying Mickey gets one up there in the jet stream and hits one about 30 rows deep. I'm in. All right. He's got himself a nice count here. Little gamesmanship going on there, Miggy calling time. And that wind, you can see it swirls at home plate. Makes it tough. You want to get a good blink in before he pitches. Pulled foul. See that ball cutting. Miggy gives him a little nod. Good pitch. Mm. He's setting him up. I'm telling you. <laughs> Don't look. Swing and a miss to strike him out. So Nice gets his fourth strikeout one away. Pretty good pattern right here. In on Miggy's knuckles, the hole at bat. Gets ahead. Throws the 90 mile an hour fastball on the outside part of the plate. As a hitter, you're half looking inside and it's by him before you can pull the trigger. Now Victor Martinez. Victor in the ball game 0 for 1 with a ground out. Going over. They were thinking like I was you know do you take a chance right here has not been throwing over to first. Try and steal a run. Make it 5 2. If you get caught stealing, you, though, you have Victor leading off the inning. I think that 
with that win as you were talking earlier in the inning. You want to stay put there at first base, give Victor a chance to hit out of the ballpark. Here's the 1 0. A hard ground ball. They hadn't played perfectly. They'll go to second one. Still have plenty of time for the double play. That's bad luck right there for the Tigers. Hard hit ball, but a twin killing. On Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Bell Tire. Get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. Get Major League coverage. T Mobile has doubled its 4G LTE in the last year. And by Chevrolet, more than you expect for less than you imagine. A little late lunch, Gibby? I'll do it. Hot oh dog. Boy. Sausages. Mm. Looks good, doesn't it? Sure does. Always has Tiger Stadium and here at Comerica. They always seem to taste better at the ballpark. I can't figure out why. They do. Matt Joyce leads it off here in the fifth inning. Joyce, Marte, and Cervelli against Justin Verlander. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Strike called. 1 1 on Matt Joyce. JV at 93 pitches now. Drew Verhagen warming up for the Tigers. So JV's probably on a pitch count, probably right around 100 pitches. Or a little over. Oh. That one floats in for a strike, little bender, 1 2. Joyce singled in a run in the first, doubled and scored in the third. Spent last year with the Angels out on the West Coast. Outside. Two and two. Pirates have had the leadoff runner on uh, what three or four innings here. Lots of pressure on the Tigers so far this game. Starling Marte lurking. Shift is on against Joyce. Inside three and two. So full fill the count now on Joyce. Who spent six years with the Rays before going to the Angels last year? And his first year with the Tigers, a pretty good year, hit 12 home runs. Tigers then dealt him to the Rays for Edwin Jackson. The 3 2. Here are those numbers in 08 with the Tigers, 12 homers. 252 average traded for the to the Rays and 
for Edwin Jackson. Boy, he's been with a lot of teams, hasn't he? He has. Popped him up. Who wants it? Here comes Iglesias. He's bolting in from the shift, and he'll make the play. Well, let's take a look at the Pirates. We've been talking a little bit about what they do good. Get him over, get him in. They've done it in three innings, the first and the third. And the fourth inning, you get a guy on second base, get him over, give yourself up at the plate. And you see Marte, a real good job. I have to think that was with two strikes. You see the fly ball in the right field there. Then again in the fourth, they sack him over. Jaso fly ball scores Harrison. Three runs out of the five done by playing small ball and Flint Hurdle's liking that. Well, when you consider how the Pirates are uh, made up this year, they've lost about 31 percent of their power from last year with the uh, departures of Neil Walker and Pedro Alvarez. Well, you know, sometimes you look at teams and you you think that those things are going to have a huge effect on you. Yet you give other teams or other players a chance to have an opportunity. And the other thing is, Clint Hurdle realizes that his, what his team is now, so that's why you're seeing the little small ball type stuff. The Pirates notoriously over the last couple of years have not gotten off to good starts. And I think they're just trying to put runs on the board. Keep running the momentum in the right direction. Get this team relaxed get them settled in a little bit and uh, get off to a better start than they have previously in pr prior years. Well, they've been put on a display here with the small ball today. Here's the 2 1 to Marte. 2 and 2. Well, let's look at the Pirates' last five years. This is under Clint Hurdle. See the wins right there. Second place in 13, 14, and 15. Got into the last three wild card games. Cutchin's been the mainstay for them over that period of time. Backbone of the team. Well, prior to Clint Hurdle getting his team into the postseason with the Pirates, the last time Pittsburgh was in postseason play, Jim Leland was their skipper. The 92 or three, something like yep, that. Yep, 92. It's the year I got released from him. Is that right? Yeah. Was there a correlation there? That <laughs> could be. Off to the golf course. So he does a good thing. <laughs> what are you laughing about over there? Nothing. Well, that hurt. You set that up. Good I didn't remember. <laughs> yeah, it does you good. Here's the 2 2. Drill to left field, and that ball is going to get up against the wall. It is yet another extra base hit for the Pirates. That's another double. Marte's first hit of the day. Well, if you look at the prior two pitches to this, they were inside. I think JV's trying to come in. Doesn't get it in quite as far right here. And Marte's looking. 86 mile an hour off speed pitch able to get the head out there for a double five doubles in this game for the Pirates. Here's Cervelli nine hits overall for Pittsburgh. Oh. Bender drops in for a strike. Cervelli knocked one in with a sack fly back in the third. And he's thinking uh, prime middle to Oppo kind of kind of hitter he is. Especially with the guy in second don't want to roll over. Went up the field there but drove it foul. 0 and 2. Cervelli occasional power had seven home runs last year for the Pirates. Hand goes down to the knees. One ball, two strikes. Career high, 130 games last year for Cervelli. Performed very well. And uh, they brought him in when Russell Martin went on to Toronto. Correct. That uh, Pittsburgh thought that would be a big loss for him. Martin, a very good player. Cervelli's done well since he's been with the Pirates.
Drew Verhagen will be next to come into this game for the Tigers. Verlander over 100 now in the pitch count category. Now Cervilli given time. This is about the third time in the game that uh, Justin has called out McCann. Just want to make sure they're on the same page. Nine hits for the Pirates, only two for the Tigers. Pirates also have left three on base so far this game. Low two balls, two strikes. This is a frustrating game for Justin. Pretty successful at four and one against the Pirates. They've uh, prepared well and made it tough on him today. Unofficially, about 24 pitches fouled off against Verlander today. That one dives low, three and two on JV or on uh, Cervelli. And JV now at 110. There is Polanco waiting on deck. I think he's probably going to take him out to this hitter. He's not going to like it. Doesn't want to come out. He wants to compete. Here's the 3-2. There's a base hit to left field. So Cervelli is aboard. Marte had to wait for that ball to go through. He will stop at third. And that's going to bring Brad out. That'll be it for Justin Verlander, who surrenders his 10th hit of this afternoon. One of those days for JV. The uh, Pirates were on him all day. And we have a wall side windows pitching change. Drew Verhagen comes in and will step aside. Here in the fifth inning, they've knocked Justin Verlander out of the game, and Drew Verhagen comes out of the bullpen for Detroit. Well, he's going to try and stop the Pirates, who put a lot of pressure on the Tigers so far. Three games already this year. Three innings and a strikeout features a fastball, curveball, and a splitter occasionally. Gregory Polanco will step in. Polanco's had a day already. Single, double, run scored. Or Hagen would like a ground ball here. It dives in there for a strike, 0 1 on Polanco. For Hagen, two stints with the Tigers last year in September allowed just three earned runs in 16 and two thirds innings. 
Ground ball right by Castellanos to the left. That'll get another run in. Cervelli is on his way to third, and he's in there sliding. To second goes Polanco, and it's now 6-1 Pirates. Well, that's tough. You can't get, catch a break. Even the ground balls are finding a hole. They got two infield hits to go with the bullets they're hitting as well. Ball's tailing away, and Polanco with a good approach. This Pirates team has got it working today offensively, making it look like they know what's coming. I'm not sure they do, though. It's it one is. of those days. Polanco's second double. Six doubles on the afternoon for the Pirates. All Verlander could do is just watch right now. Here's Josh Harris in the infield coming in. Ball one. Well, this is a Pirates team that was no joke last year. They won 98 games and finished second in the National League Central. In for a strike, 1 1. Justin uh, didn't make it to the fifth today. Ten hits, six runs, a couple walks, a couple strikeouts, five doubles allowed. It, uh, you have to regroup. Be ready for his next start. McCann able to keep it off to his left. You no, know, he got the extra day because of the rain out, right? That's correct. And a lot of pitchers like that, that fifth day. You just never know, though. Yeah. Last night, uh, of course, he was supposed to pitch in the 8 o'clock game, but that was washed away. Here's the 2 1. So now it's gone 3 and 1 on Josh Harrison. Rodriguez on deck. 11 hits today for the Pirates, only two for the Detroiters. And he lost in ball four. So Harrison aboard for the third time. It's going to load the bases. For Sean Rodriguez. Well, we need a ground ball to find somebody's glove. Turn this double play. Let those Tiger bats come alive. Cervelli at third, Polanco at second, Harrison now at first base. We've had some long innings here so far in this game. Broken bat pop up back a short. Iglesias can't get there. They'll throw back behind the runner at second. That'll drop in for a base hit, score another run. Amazing. That's the third broken bat. Little blooper goes with. Two infield singles. I think Harrison's got a couple of them. He's got one of them in an RBI and another one here. Good pitch in the hands. Just a good effort by Iglesias. Tried to get the runner at second. And that's a play that we've seen Iglesias make in the past. You kind of hold your breath to see if you can get to it that time, just unable to reach out there. Here's Jordy Mercer. Two more runs in for the Pirates. They're still loaded up. Ball one. And so far, Verhagen does not have the feel for that off speed pitch. So the numbers are complete. The two runs here charged to Verlander. He is touched up for seven runs in this game. Little pop up foul. Mercer big two run single that was back in the second. Bouncing ball toward short Iglesias ranging right throws to second one relay is in time a double play. And do they need that with the bases loaded a six four three. And we'll see if the Pirates want to challenge here. Close play at first base was called out. 
you get closer to the seventh inning, it's the managers are more apt to take a chance. He wants to check at second base, it looks like. Ah, okay. Got it first. Nope. No, not going to do it. All right. 6 4 3 ends the inning. Two runs in for the Pirates. Tigers baseball today, presented by Bell Tire. Today they lead the Tigers seven to one as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning and J.D. Martinez will lead it off for the Tigers and he hammers one deep to left field way back and gone. First pitch of the inning is back into the seats and it's seven to two. Might have been a changeup. J.D. Offering early. Nice has been very effective getting the ball in 87. That looks like a cutter. Brought his hands. Look how he brings his hands in real tight right here. And this, if you see everybody getting their knuckles uh, bruised up a little bit, you make the adjustment, you execute properly, and the Tigers got to run. Both of the Tigers' runs coming out homers in this game. Castellanos has the other hit, his to the opposite field. 7 2 ball game now. Tigers trying to climb back into this one. Only their third hit of the day. Only in fifth inning here. We got a lots, lot of game left. Plenty of time. Need some base runners, though. The home run by Castellanos in the second was his first of the year. The 1 1. J.D. Martinez goes deep. His first of the season. Pulled on the ground, foul down the third baseline. Is that Castellanos home run in the second inning the other way? Those both first pitches. Swing and a miss. Tipped it into the glove for strike three. One gone. Nice now with five strikeouts. He had seven in his first start. Still working very fast. Tigers are trying to make the adjustment. Jumpy Murley. But uh, it looks like he's in early and trying to finish away. Going, 
McCann flied out in his only at bat back in the second. Strike one to James. McCann is now two for nine in the homestand. Quickly 0 and 2. A lot of strikes. Always been up in the count here so far in this game. Just off the plate outside. Got pretty good stuff uh, on both sides of the plate, working it on the inside corner, moving off, and then starting it off on the left hand part of the box and moving it on the plane. Nice coming into this game had somewhat of a streak going that uh, he had preferred to snap today. He had lost eight straight interleague starts or has gone eight without a win I should say. Teammates have given him a seven to two lead in this one. Well they scored in every inning so far have the Pirates Tigers could do the same here and out. McCann last year established a rookie record for the Tigers in innings caught over 934 innings caught which was a rookie record. That works good because first of all you want to get them a lot of innings so they develop further as a catcher and when they're young they're able to do that. He might throw him out. Oh there's a collision at first base did he hold on to the baseball they call him out and McCann is down on the turf. What a play by Harrison McCann I think he sprayed his ankle. Oh boy. He collided with the first baseman Jaso. Yeah I think you're going to see his ankle sprain here. On the base doesn't hit it cleanly. He's a tough kid but the. To take a look at it and. Uh, you see this ankle roll look at right here. Ooh. Probably what happens is you you're starting to take your eyes off the bag and look at Jaso. And uh, this pretty tough kid that's going to be sore. I can't believe that's not going to swell up. Well he is at least able to walk on it as they take him off the field. Well when you get an injury like that. You know. You, the more swelling that gets into it, the more the longer it's going to take you to to get back. So you have to measure whether it's smarter right now to go take him out of the game and treat it, and try and keep everything to a minimum, or to let him continue to play. Or maybe they throw some tape on that that ankle. So with two outs, here is Collins who pops it up, shallow left field. Rodriguez and Mercer. It's Mercer to make the play, and that will end the inning. Tigers going to run back on the homer by J.D. Martinez.
we go to the top of the sixth inning have your party at an upcoming Tigers game. Party suites and party areas are on sale now groups of 15 or more receive discounted tickets. Visit Tigers.com slash groups or call 313 471 ball. Changes for the Tigers. We have a new catcher now. James McCann is out of the game. Jared Saltalamacchia will take over, and here's why. Yeah, James McCann hits a ground ball. Josh Harrison makes a pretty good play on it. He's going to get into a collision. He takes his eyes off the bag and sprains that right ankle. It looks like he rolls it over. I did walk off the field, but uh, I think the Tigers would be playing it smart here to get him in the training room and try and minimize what. The damage. And we also have a new pitcher brought to you by Wallside Windows, Logan Kinsing. Two games this year, two and two thirds innings. Tigers will be looking for him to shut down this hot hitting Pirates club. So John Jaso will lead things off. It was kind of amazing that Jaso was able to hold on to that baseball at first base. He was leveled by McCann. Yeah, what do you do? You know, you try and pull up. There's no question he took his eyes off the bag to try and avoid the collision. You might some many might argue you should go full speed, but hopefully it's not too serious. Jay So with a double run scored oh. and a sacrifice fly in this game. He looks at a strike. McCutcheon and then Joyce top of the order the Pirates have scored in every inning so far and they lead seven to two. The shift is on for Jay so. Two and one. Ball high three and one. For Hagen came on and faced four batters, gave up two hits, a walk, but got a double play ball. Well, you can see why the Pirates like Jaso. He's worked every at bat he's been up there. Sure has. Deep in every count. And he's going to go the other way. There's a base hit. Boy, the leadoff man on again for the Pirates. This again, going, we got a shift on up there, but. Ball down and away. Doesn't try and do too much with this pitch. Right on into left field. Serves it out there. You made this comment earlier, Gibby, about how some hitters now are starting to evolve in terms of these shifts and going the other way and using the opposite field. Well, I think you clearly see in the two at bats by Jason that that's exactly what he's doing. You have to be disciplined, though. Now, he's been getting ahead in the count early, early on. The that first inning, if you remember. Tigers were ahead in the count and we had the shift on and they threw it away and he just served it. You just got to kind of tip your hat sometimes. McCutcheon has hit a couple of balls hard to the gap in left center field that the center fielder Collins is able to run down. But he's over three. 13 hits today for the Pirates. Swing and a miss, good pitch. Very good pitch, good slider right there. I think that's where you, we've tried to do this a couple times today. Get that slider down, breaking out of the zone for Chase. And we've left some in the zone and the Pirates have been on everything. The one one. Left the strike zone there, one two. Tell you, McCutcheon looks like he's backed off the plate to me over the previous years. I don't ever remember him being off the plate this much. Hitters will make adjustments. Sometimes you get thrown inside too often, so you make that adjustment. You take that away by moving off the plate. Real to center field and Collins will back off on this one. McCutcheon has his first hit. And the Pirates are back at it again. It's like they can't miss today. Well, that pitch there had middle. The previous pitch was a good location. And yeah, it seems like it's one of these days that 
matter what you throw up there, they're just on it. Doesn't always make sense, but it's happening today. 14 hits. Now, from the Tigers, you can't get too frustrated. You got to continue to force yourself if you're out there in the field, on the infield, or the outfield. You're the catcher, the pitcher. Got to keep your head in the game, anticipate just as you would if it was a one run game or a tie game. This game can change quickly, though the Tigers trail 7 2 here at the top of the six. It can turn around, get a big inning going. That's the strength of this team, so scoring runs. Matt Joyce, the batter. Ball low. Two balls, no strikes. Joyce with a single and a double. Six doubles in this game for the Pirates. And another threaten here in the sixth inning with two on and nobody out. Brown ball to first. Miggy will fire to second. There's one. Relay in time. Another double play. Two gone now with the runner at third. We check in and the game break with Mickey York. All right, Mick, thank you. Here it is, a runner at third down with two outs for Starling Marte. Red Sox off to a pretty good start. They were three and two right behind Baltimore that uh, came in at five and oh. So just going back to that last double play, Miguel Cabrera, you watch him, he's very accurate. That's not an easy play. Going to his left, reversing, and then throwing down to second. Logan Kinsing again gets over there very well to get the double play. I think Kirk that is the most underrated part of his game not just the arm strength but the accuracy. Now watch he's got to get this going to his left a little bit turns. Very accurate throw. The Glaciers and Kinsing getting over there. There's a, uh, ooh, there's a lot that goes on in that it's not an easy play. But the impressive thing. He's used to, used to being on the other side of the diamond. Now they move him over to first base, which he has many games on it, but he picked it up very quickly. Sometimes it's hard to move from one side of the diamond to the other. Two and one on Marte. He's just a very natural ball player. Ton of ability. High fly ball to center field, not deep. Collins coming in under it. And the threat is over. No runs, two hits, one left.
game as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning of the ballpark today. Celebrate Detroit sports with April in the D. Make your way to 12 Oaks in Novi and check out your favorite Lions, Pistons, Red Wings, and Tigers bobbles. A full list of locations for all of the bobbleheads. You can get it by visiting www.aprilinthed.com. Can you identify those? I don't think they're identifiable. There's a base hit to center field for Iglesias. They're vintage. So they really know it just represents just, the team. Correct. But I was trying to figure it out. So Ian Kinsler will step in. Tigers have a leadoff single here in the sixth. Let's we'll see if they can get to knees here. Yeah, it's worked well for the Pirates so far in this game. And they fly out and a strikeout for Kinsler, who shoots one foul to right field. Ian trying to extend that four game hitting streak he had multiple hit games in each of his first three after leading the league in multi hit games last year. So far flew out the center and uh, struck out on a fastball up. Jonathan Neese doing a pretty masterful job so far but as we get into the sixth inning pitch count up there at 70 not a lot of pitches but either way. Hope that he leaves some more mistakes over the middle of that plate. To right field, but playable for Polanco. Is the sixth inning the most difficult for a manager in terms of, you know, working your bullpen and trying to get your starter through that sixth inning? Well, I think for pitchers, I've heard the fifth inning because you got to get through that inning to get your okay. get your decision. Uh, it, a lot, but the manager depends on how. You know how tough a game you've been throwing so far for Nice. It's been smooth sailing. He's had pretty short innings in all of the innings so far. So I, I think he's going to try and get him as deep as he can. He's probably got a pitch count around 100 pitches. He's willing to do that because you know you play you play the Tigers the next three days too. So you know when you come into a series, you're trying to kind of wear the other team out a little bit. So their pieces they don't have all their pieces available. They're trying to do the same thing to you. So if you get your bullpen and two involved, then certain guys aren't available, and it makes it much easier on the other team. Upton looks at a ball outside, two and one. Speaking of which, this is, I guess, ostensibly a four-game series here: two at home, two on the road. And a lot of times, when you see a team four straight days, you don't get a lot of those during the season. No, you don't. The two and two, they've been doing that quite a bit. Three and one. You get to see four of the starters. You'll have a real good feel for how everybody's swinging the bat and what your tendencies are. You can have a real feel for how they're going to pitch you. So at uh, the, the beginning of those series, usually set up the end in a different fashion. You have a good idea who you want to go after and who you want to pitch around in situations. Because when you come in. A series like now, you, you know, they have a scouting report. And they scout them both video-wise, and they have an advanced scout, I believe. But you don't really see it. Sanchez will throw tomorrow for the Tigers. And he lost him. Ball four outside. That'll put two men on. With only one out. Hey, six games. The six game flex plans are on sale right now for as little as one hundred ten dollars. You'll get six Tigers games of your choice. Call three one three four seven one ball today or visit Tigers dot com for the six game flex plan. Well this is why you hang in there down by five runs got two on. Wouldn't it be something. Yeah you got a shot now with Miggy coming up and he takes ball one. He's pretty much thrown Miguel all inside, especially early in the count. And remember, late on the strikeout, went away with the with the fastball. Pretty much cutters and sliders into the righties. Fastball away with a little elevation as well. This is the first time the Tigers have gotten a runner in scoring position today. Now their two runs have come on homers. Castellanos. And J.D. Martinez solo shots. So 
and talk about how big he's the best of anybody at making adjustments in game. Let's see if he's not cheating in. 2 0. Oh. Double play ball and a strikeout for Miguel today. Double play ball was on a cutter. In on the hands. Chopper to third foul. Two and one. The other thing about the Pirates is last year at least their bullpen was outstanding. Lowest ERA in the National League last year. They got a good one at the back in the Lanson. It's like 50 out of 52 or 51 out of 53. And there's a ground ball off the glove of Mercer and the short center one run scores up then will go to third base a hard hit ball and it's now seven to three. Well let's take a look at the belt tire pitch by pitch Miggy is third at bat right here with a chance to do some damage and again Nice starts him off with the breaking pitch still down in under the hands. Biggie rolls it over and he hits this ball hard. And Tigers get a break that hits a hole out there in the infield. You get this late in the game. You can get some divots out there. Iglesias in the score. Upton on to third. And the Tigers have a run. We, what are we, 7 3? That is an error charge to Jordy Mercer. That's pretty tough. It's a really tough error. I bet you could see. That thing was scalded. Well, it took a bad hop. And it cost Cabrera an RBI. It's going to get changed. We'll get a conversation on the mound here. Ray Searage has been awfully good as their pitching coach. There is action in the bullpen now as they try and buy some time for Corey Lukey, the lefty. So the Tigers crawling back into it now seven to three on an afternoon where they basically were quieted by Jonathan Nice but they kind of hung around. Well we know that's what the Tigers have the ability to do. Get through Miggy with limited damage. Now you got Victor and J.D. and Nick Castellanos behind. Pick up some more runs here. Victor has put the ball on the ground twice although the last one he hit was a bullet that was turned into a 4 6 3 double play. And it was a ball that was hit right back up the middle and Harrison again has him shaded toward the bag at second. It's kind of a modified shift that they're not all on the left side of the diamond. See Harrison right here. Look at McCutcheon very shallow in center field. Two and oh. Nice has found some trouble here by falling behind in the count. Three and oh on Victor Martinez. And he's not taken. I mean, he's got the green light here. Got the official word, by the way, on James McCann. He left the game with a right ankle sprain, which we anticipated. See what Victor does here on 3 0. He's going to take 3 and 1. Ooh. Big run out there right now. Got to at least pick up one more. In the air to shallow center field. And it's going to drop. Base hit. Another run will score. Broken bat single for Victor Martinez. And it's 7 to 4. Well, take that. That's happened a couple times to the Tigers today. Receiving in from the Pirates to take a grip right here. Looks like another cutter. And he's right in on the hands. Here's the location. Right on that inside corner you can see there with their Fox tracks and you might wonder well, why don't you make the adjustment that you're not they're not seeing that cut very good they're not picking it up and they're unable to get that barrel on the ball. J.D. rolls one toward the third baseman they'll tag the runner nope 
Did he tag him? He did. Stay on that base. Stay on the base. That's only two outs. They didn't get the out at second base, did they? I don't believe so. Pirates are walking off the field. Cabrero is tagged out. Did they touch second. They did. They must have touched second, but I thought the runner got there before that. Now Brad Ausmus wants clarification here. He didn't get Miggy. He's going to challenge us. Did I see Miggy? Let's see. Do we see daylight? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But did he go out of the baseline? That's uh, that's what they're going to say. If if they overturned this, so you can see the umpires are meeting right now. He missed him. I predict that Clint Hurdle will come out and ask them to review for being out of the baseline. And the throw at second clearly ahead of the runners, so they're going to confer about this right now. Cabrera pretty adamant that he didn't tag him. Well, they're going to have to go review it video on video. Why wouldn't you? You want to make sure you get it right? Absolutely. Now Brad's going to be upset if they won't at least go take a look at it, but they're probably going to tell him he was out of the baseline. Well, what a huge call in this game because the Tigers were rolling. And you want to at least pick up that run. Now well, they're going to come over. They're going to review something here. So here's the non tag. I think the question would be did he go out of the baseline? It didn't really look like he changed direction that much. He's out at second for oh, sure. And again, if. They call him safe. I think Hurdle may come and ask him, ask him to review whether he was out of the baseline. Just played it on the video board. Yeah, and the fans can clearly see that he missed the tag. The question is, was he out of the baseline? You know, and, and really, I'm maybe being a little bit of a homer here and saying he didn't really change direction. I mean, when he actually avoided the tag, he didn't really go out of the baseline that much. He just See Rodriguez just trying to make sure he gets the play in second, so he, he didn't go back to tag him again. He knew he missed him. So Brad uses his challenge. And if he's right, he'll keep it for future use. If, so he's, if he's wrong, he loses it. Brad must have gone out there and said, let's talk about this first. And then if he didn't get the decision he wanted, then he challenged. Yeah, well, he did. He didn't get him, but. They're going to if they call him out, they're going to say that he was out of the baseline. Well, again, a big call here because the Tigers had put two runs on the board that would keep the inning going. Everybody's standing watching the video board on the field. Now these the, the on field umpires they have nothing to do. They just tell them what they want them to review. And then the umpires in New York they have several crews in New York. Yeah, there we go. So Cabrera will not be called out for leaving the baseline, but he clearly wasn't tagged on that play. That's going to leave runners at first and third and keep the inning going. That gives the Tigers another run, doesn't it? Well, let me ask you this. Could Clint Hurdle go on and say, check the baseline now if he was out of the baseline? That's what I thought he would do. That's what I thought he would do. Seven to four ball game. Here's Castellanos with runners at first and third. Nick's been very hot. Good time for a comeback. Fly ball in the air towards center, not deep. Here comes McCutcheon, and that will end the inning. Change up. So the Tigers settle for two, six in the books here at Comerica.
seven four interesting instant replay and that's the Tigers another run and uh, we want to look at they put the instant replay procedures here this is what is under ineligible for review okay now down at the bottom they also have boundary challenges that's by the umpires but it says any play not listed is not reviewable so do we see anything in there out of the baseline no but there is tag play on there so I, so they, they, was they challenged the tag play and Clint Hurdle did not challenge ah, out of the baseline. Gotcha. That's not challengeable. There we That's have it. Point. Yep. Sorted it out. Good job there, Gibby. Well, we had help. Well, you can take the credit, though. No, I don't want the credit. I just take the criticism. Well, Happy it is that. seven to four now. And here is Cervelli. He'll be followed by Polanco and Harrison. There's a ball inside, one ball to no strikes. Single sack fly at RBI in this ball game for oh. Cervelli. Now it's incumbent really here on Kensing and the Tigers bullpen to keep this thing where it is because they couldn't stop the Pirates offense, but now their team is back in the game. No, no question about it. Bullpen becomes very critical right here. If you hold them and you nibble back, that's getting you closer before that back end guy comes in and balance it. But it's just hard. You get a little momentum, one in the fifth, two in the sixth. And we just put up our first zero against the Pirates and their top half of the sixth. Cervelli lays off two balls, two strikes on the Pirates catcher. There is activity. Former Tiger Neftali Feliz warming up. He's been good for them in the early going. A couple of former Tigers on this staff. Kyle Lapstein as well. Three and two. Tigers have already used two pitchers for Hagen and now Kinsey. Soft liner to center. He just reached out, and poked it into center field for the 15th hit of the day for the Pirates. Again, the first guy reaches. Tigers fans, if you can't watch Tigers games on TV, you can now stream games live on your mobile device. Just go to your app store and download the free Fox Sports Go app. Log in and stream Tigers baseball wherever you go. Second hit today for Cervelli. Here is Gregory Polanco. Three for three. Couple doubles. RBI and a run. Off to a hot start. Polanco recently signing that five year extension. And here's a strike called on the young outfielder. Action in the Tigers pen now that's lefty Kyle Ryan starting to loosen. Here's the 0 1. Did not go. Polanco in his amateur days in the Dominican Republic was primarily a pitcher. When scouts saw him and projected him as a pretty good hitter and outfielder, and here he is. Tall, big, yeah. big frame. A lot of skills. 1 1. Ground ball towards second. Nice play, Kinsler to second one. Relay. Hey, that's a double play. What a play by Ian Kinsler. I believe Ian Kinsler is the second best at turning over double play balls in the American League and what a what a grab right here puts the glove right down guesses the hop perfectly good feed to Iglesias and back to Miggy for double play sharply hit ball it looked like it might be a four hit day for Polanco Tigers now have turned a double play in each of the last three innings things are turning around 
Started slow, struggled a bit early. Some good things are happening for the Tigers here late in the game. Harrison looks at a strike. Single double walk for Josh Harrison. Line drive caught by the second baseman Kinsler and the inning is over. Nothing doing for the Pirates. Coming up the Consumers Energy. Seventh and Live with the MLB.com at Bad App. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live game video highlights, stat cast, news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone or tablet. Got a couple of those. If you like baseball, it's a place to be. Got a new picture. We know this guy, Neftali Feliz. Four games so far for the uh, Pirates. Here with the Tigers last year in Texas for seven years. For that, fastball slider guy, very firm with his heater. Well, 96, 97 miles an hour. He did struggle mightily in the Tigers uniform last year, an ERA of about seven and a half in 30 appearances. You know, he kept throwing. And he came back and he had some decent games after that, but he uh, did not not as consistent enough for the Tigers. Uh, he's always had a good arm. First one home from Feliz is outside to Jared Saltalamacchia. It's the shift on against Salty, his first at bat. Pounded foul back out of play. If you tuned in late, James McCann sprained his ankle, rolled it. On a play at first base, so he is out of the game. Outside, two balls, one strike. Let's take a look at this defense, how the, the Pirates do it. They got one here, two, got three over here, and then look at this guy. He's all by himself over here. The other two outfielders over in right center. That's trust in the numbers. Boy, you're not kidding. I mean, you'd never see that 10 years ago. I mean, probably five years ago. But uh, the data suggests that's where he's going to hit the ball. Now he's ahead in the count. And we've, we've had a little adjustment. Get more towards the right hand side of the diamond. Cuts and playing very shallow. Here's the 3 1. Three and two on Saltalamacchia. 
fans didn't like that. Fox track says it's in within the zone. By the way, he prefers to be referred as Mr. Fox tracks. Why not Mrs. Because it's it's a guy. How do you know? We've confirmed that. Well, I'm not going to go any further with that. <laughs> Nor should you. No. Three and two. Swing and a miss. Salto Lamacchio is out of there. One gone. Pretty much thrown balls of pitches away and uh, he got one under his hands there. So that close call didn't work for the Tigers. So Feliz will face another left handed batter. That's Tyler Collins, who is 0 for 2. Feliz made his National League debut on opening day. And retired all three Cardinals batters he faced. Off to a nice start with his new team. And at one time, uh, one of the best closers in the American League with the Rangers. 40 saves back in 2010. The Tigers need runners here, so Tyler Collins got to look right down the middle and don't expand the zone. Two and one. Kyle Ryan, Mark Lowe in the Detroit bullpen. And I would think, uh, based upon how many runs the Tigers get, may determine who comes in the game. Two and two. Well, the Tigers have been out hit by 10 in this game, 15 to 5, yet they are still very much in it. A 7 to 4 score in the 7. Get a couple guys on, get the tie run at the plate. Jonathan Nice uh, pretty much was on his game the first five innings, but then began to fall behind some hitters. He tired probably a little bit, he did a heck of a job. That floats outside, 3 2 now on Collins. If you get a runner on, you also can affect the Pirates' ability to make their shift adjustments against you. That's why it's just important in so many ways to get runners on base. Another foul back out of play. Collins has also played a pretty good center field today. He's run down some balls in the gap in left center. Tigers still waiting on the return of Cameron Mabin, and they think uh, mid-April, which is rapidly approaching. Everybody started in Lakeland, and then they go from Lakeland, they progress up to Toledo, and then on to Detroit. So I think uh, Daniel Norris is another start in Lakeland. He's maybe have two more, then he'll move up. Mabin is due to go to Toledo soon if he hasn't already. Blaine Hardy the same. Again the 3 2. To shallow left center who wants it McCutcheon. Ooh. That didn't look smooth but he made the catch. Well don't think he trusted his partner over there he was calling it but usually if you're the off outfielder you want to get out of the way so you're not spooking your teammate. See McCutcheon's calling it all the way and Marte keeps moving towards him and he just sees him out of the corner of his eye. I wouldn't want to get hit by Marte either, would you? No. Negative. You don't want to get hit by anybody. Here's Iglesias. See if he can get it going here with two outs. Breaking oh. ball drops in, strike one. Jose got it started in the sixth with a single, scored a run. He's hit safely in five in a row now to start the year. You know, Jose looks pretty good this year all facets of the game. He worked very hard down in spring training. I think he's very fortunate to have Omar Vizquel and Ian Kinsler on field. 
Get a little tutelage. I love that word. <laughs> Why? Tutelage. It just sounds funny. Could almost sing it. No, we don't want to do that. <laughs> Two balls, one strike on Iglesias. We'll shoot that one foul back out of play. 2-2 two -two now on Iggy. Should he reach, Kinsler is on deck. Feliz with the 2 2. Bouncer back up the middle. Gonna have to hurry. Harrison, tough play. Good throw. Solid Tigers play. go 1 2 3. Solid play indeed. Tigers baseball presented by Belt Tire. Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank. Raise your expectations of what a bank can be when it's time. Come to Comerica. Your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Visit ChevyDetroit.com. See why Chevy drives the Motor City. And by Wallside Windows. We can do that. We are the factory. Back here at Comerica Park where the Tigers need a late comeback. They're down 7-4 as we go to the eighth inning. And the Tigers go back to the bullpen. It'll be Mark Lowe. Yeah, this will be the third uh, Tiger coming out of the pen. Mark Lowe's brought in to keep the uh, Pirates in check. 57 games last year with Seattle and Toronto. 1960 ERA, very dominant. See, doesn't walk anybody. 61 strikeouts, only 12 walks. Sean Rodriguez will lead it off against Lowe. Tigers have gone with Verhagen, Kensing, and now Mark Lowe here in the eighth inning. Tigers starter Justin Verlander was bounced out of the game in the fifth. Only the third time in his career that he had gone 100 pitches but not complete five innings. They drove the pitch count up early today against Verlander. Yep, they fouled a lot of pitches off. I think you said it was 24 or somewhere in that area. And uh, just uh, Pirates came out swinging the bats well. JB battled. Now it's up to the Tiger bullpen. In the air to right field for JD Martinez. Rodriguez saw one gone. First time they've retired him today. Pirates scored in the first five innings. Tigers have shut them down, put zeros on the board in the next two. Need to hold that on the way out here. Jordy Mercer now with one out. Tiger Penn has done a nice job since the Pirates last scored. They got a couple of runs in the fifth. They had scored in every inning leading up to the fifth. 
but a couple of goose eggs in the sixth and seventh. Uh, hopefully here in the eighth. Let's see if this one gets into the seats it will. Oh and two on Jordy Mercer. Two run single sacrifice and a double play ball. A little bit outside from low. Low, the new eighth inning man for the Tigers this year. John Jaso waiting on deck. And the one two. Just a skosh outside, two and two. Low last year split the season between Toronto and Seattle. Three and two. A lot of three two counts today. Mark Lowe is beginning his 11th season in the major leagues. Little chopper toward the shortstop. Castellanos cuts it off right in front of Iglesias. Two gone. Let's take a look at the 1 800 call Sam call of the game before he got hurt. James McCann in the first inning gets Matt Joyce and in the third. Gregory. Polanco very accurate throws good tag right there that makes him four of five on the year. If you missed it in the fifth inning in a jam shot here. McCann twists his right ankle on the bag trying to avoid the collision and Tigers uh, precautionary took him out of the game and uh, they're reporting it as a sprained right ankle. Here is John Jaso. Step foul 0 and 1 on Jaso. Seven runs, 15 hits for the visiting Pirates. Four runs, five hits for the homestanding Tigers. Been a pretty good day for Jaso. Single, double, sack fly. In there for a strike. Ready with the 0 2. Here it is. In on his hands that time. Fouled straight back. I tell you, he's fouled several pitches off in there. That's that's tough. That's way in there. You can just watch how he keeps those hands. He pulls them way in tight to his body. He's not trying to put that ball in play. He's just trying to foul it off. He's done it several times against the Tigers today. Swing and a miss. Low gets him on strikes and a one, two, three, eighth inning from Mark Low. Here come the Tiger bats in the bottom of the eighth.
Justin Verlander just his third career start of 100 or more pitches in less than five innings. The Tigers fit a couple of home runs in this game, JD and Castellanos, but the Pittsburgh offense has been the big story here today. 15 hits, six of those doubles. Well, we got a new third baseman, David Fries. Sean Rodriguez moves over to first and uh, also have a new pitcher. Tony Watson. This guy throws good stuff. Boy, he's nasty. He's got good stuff. 24 and 8 in his career. The whip just over one. Left handed batters did not uh, get an earned run off him last year. 70 plus innings. Last three years are very dependable. And here's where the Pirates have him slotted in the eighth inning for their season. Yeah, and this is where they were so good last year. Watson in the eighth and Melanson in the ninth. Got the top of the order to face Kinsler Upton and Cabrera. Tigers down by three in the eighth. It has popped up. See if it stays in play. Sean Rodriguez has room. One gone. So Watson does what he needs to do and keep the leadoff man off the bases with some artillery coming up now. As Justin Upton stands in. Yeah, if you're the Tigers, you want to get runners on. You got Jay up, Miggy, B Mart, JD. Get a couple guys on a pop one. Watson has had a 1.58 ERA since the 2013 All Star break. That's kind of unbelievable, really. You're going back a couple of years now. One ball, no strikes on Upton. Outside, two and zero. Talking about the appearances, right there at the top of the list since 2013. Right below him, their closer. Not too far behind. Had a rip on 2 0 and sent it back in the seats. We got another good catch. Boy, Tigers fans have been on their game today. Same guy? Is it? I don't think so. But it is the same guy, so he's here to get foul balls. Look at he's on the run. You know, he's gotten five balls today. And he's given them all away. Oh, he's looking right now. It's like stand up and cheer, one of those things. How do you catch five foul balls in a game? Swing and a miss. Well, let's take a look. He's in a hot spot. There's one. He's saying two. Gives it away. There's three. Say you hear him say bring it on. Made the play there. Good hands. That's five. Give him a contract. Does the guy in, in Baltimore give that give that fan a contract? Rex Barney. Rex Barney. Yep. Yeah. Old Rex said it very loudly too. Two out. Nobody on for Cabrera. Watson backs him out of there. One ball. One strike. 20 Watson, good fastball, 93 94, slider and a good change. Left that one high, two and one on Miggy. Seventy seven appearances last year for Watson, 78 the year before that. We showed you that graphic on how often he's been used the last three years. He'll sling one low and the count goes to three and one. Victor waiting on deck. Way outside so he tiptoed gingerly around Miguel Cabrera. 
Well, if you're ever going to go after him, you would do it now with the three run lead. He would intentionally walk him. Lost him. Tigers are looking to get two here right now. Hope B Mark can get a hold of one. You were talking about uh, 70 plus innings for Watson. Melanson also has 70 plus, and Caminero has 70 plus too. So they're going to lean on those guys a lot again this year, all back for the Pirates. So here is Victor. Go after it. Big hole. Popped him up. First base side, Sean Rodriguez calling, inning over. No runs, a walk, one left. To the ninth we go. Baltimore Orioles somewhat of a surprise in the early going here. Pittsburgh with a 7-4 lead as we go to the top of the ninth inning. Tigers going right back to the bullpen. It's lefty Kyle Ryan. Oh, Kyle back on the mound again. Throwing the ball really good in spring training. Has done the same here into the young season. Good fastball. Sinker. Got it. Came up with a really good cutter. Couple strikeouts in an inning so far this year. Two, three, and four in the lineup for Clint Hurdle. Andrew McCutcheon leads it off. Single in four at bats for McCutcheon, Joyce, and then Marte to follow. Swing and a miss. See that pitch right there, cut right into the hands of Andrew McCutcheon. Kyle with a lot of confidence this year. You can see it in the way he's throwing the ball. With the lefty on the mound, uh, Michael Morse has moved to the on deck circle. He'll bat for Joyce. Here's the one two. Bouncing in, two balls, two strikes on McCutcheon. Been on base now and all seven for the Pirates this year. High fly ball, straight away center. Collins under it. Well, let's take a look at the big boys' big plays of the game. We have four double plays today. You had to strike them out, throw them out early in the game. Uh, Pirates, all kinds of pressure on the Tigers. Scored seven runs so far, but had it not been for these other three double plays, it could have been a lot worse. Ian Kinsler with a fine play right there. 
The Tiger defense has kept them in this one at least. They have. That's what you have to do. Morris pinch hitting looks at ball one. Yeah, you get down to this. If somehow we can tie it up. Start to look uh, who they've used and who you've used. And it kind of sets up the next training game. So I'm thinking about. Thinking like a manager. There's their closer, Mark Melanson. He's been good, 51 out of 53 last year. And Castellanos handles that when there are two gone. Let's peek ahead a little bit. The upcoming pitching matchup presented by Gordon Chevrolet. Here are the probables. Juan Nicasio will go tomorrow for the Pirates and then Animal Sanchez for the Tigers. Sanchi coming off a good start against those Miami Marlins. Your time noon tomorrow. Grounded foul 0 and 1 on Starling Marte. Two base hit for Marte that came in the fifth. He scored a run. His only hit today. Broken bat toward left field. And it'll drop right in front of Upton. Barrel of the bat going to the outfield grass. I think I got that as four broken bats. <laughs> Gets in on him. She's cutting in tight on him, right off the label. And those uh, maple bats just don't hold up. There is Cervelli. That'll be the 16th Pirates hit. We had him leaning the other way. Ryan chasing him back. I think he was going or he was getting baiting him. Good question. Arte measuring his lead. And back to first he goes. Cervelli with two singles and a sacrifice fly in this game. He's had a good day. Another toss back. Cervelli has one of the best walk up songs in all of baseball when he plays his home games in Pittsburgh. What is it? That's Amore. That's it's just, right. you know, when the I moon almost, hits your eye like a big pizza pie. Yeah, I yeah. got you. I almost was going to sing it, but I caught myself. I'm glad you did. Grounded foul. You didn't have walk up songs back in your day, did you? No. Fans clapping. Music to our ears. Yeah, that's the best walk up song. And occasionally they would say, Lou, in my case, boo. Sometimes people just get frustrated with the way I am. Imagine that. There's another throwback to first. If you were to have a walk up song these days, what would it be? Or even back in your playing days? I don't know. That'd be a tough one. I'd have to put some serious consideration and calculation on that. It would have to have some edge. It would have to be a hard rock song, I think. The 0 1. Slice to right field. That'll get down. Another hit for Cervelli. Good approach there. Back to the right field again. That'll bring up Polanco. What would yours be? Probably go with Little River Band, Lonesome Loser. Lonesome Loser. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know. I have no idea what it would be. Well, if it was a local guy, something Bob Seegerish. I, I was going to say Seeger up yeah. on the stage. Playing star again. 
Alice Cooper would be a big one too. He's, he's a, good. He's a Detroit guy. Maybe some M and M's from Kid Rock. One ball, no strikes on Polanco. Yeah, it's another Michigander. Iggy Pop was here the other night. Iggy Pop, that's right. Not even going to go any further with that. That was a good show, though. Over at the Fox. People were fired up before opening day. Here's the 1 0. That's inside. Two balls and no strikes. You got little creatures in your head right now. I can see. I do, and they're creeping out, but I'm going to hold them back. Give you a couple games. <laughs> little creatures. Yeah, they are. <laughs> You get this last out right here. Two balls, one strike on Gregory Polanco. Tigers in the bottom of the ninth will have J.D. Martinez, Nick Castellanos, and Jared Saltalamacchia. And they'll have to do it against the closer Mark Melanson of the Pirates. First things first, though, got to keep it seven to four. Cal Ryan should have a good opportunity here. Polanco not as good against lefties. Got to throw him strikes. Three and one. Sometimes when you're a lefty and you see all righties, then you get your first lefty. It's harder to gauge the strike zone. It's been the case so far this at bat. Drill to center field on a line. Collins will get there. Hard hit ball for the third out. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Go to the bottom of the ninth. And now with a preview of what's coming up on Tigers Live post game, we say hello to Justin White. Hey, Mario, we are hoping for a rally here in the bottom of the ninth. And after that, we'll have Tigers Live post game for you. As always, you'll hear from manager Brad Osmus, and I'll talk to Justin Verlander about what had to be a frustrating day for the Tigers ace. Mickey York is in the studio with Rod Allen and Craig Monroe for Tigers Live immediately following the game, guys. But upstairs to you for now. All right, Justin, thanks very much. Let's take a look now at the Jimmy John's freaky fast delivery of the game. How about Mr. J.D. Martinez on the first pitch he saw? He hit it a mile. Get out of here freaky fast. One of two home runs hit today by the Tigers. J.D. along with Castellanos. And they will both hit here in the ninth inning. They will face Mark Melanson. Well, this is uh, Pirates horse. He's had a great career with since being sent over to uh, the Pirates. Saved 51 of 53 last year, 70 plus innings the last three years. And he used to just be a fastball curveball guy, and then he added the cutter, and he's a totally different, dominating pitcher. 
So JD will start things off down by three bottom of the ninth inning. And the first one is inside. Melanson was with Boston back in 2012 had an ERA of 6.20 but since he has come to the Pirates he has just been a different guy. He yeah, lost his confidence over there in Boston. Like I said he came up with that cutter. Yeah. And it's uh, it's a good one. 1-1. One, one. The good cutters are hard to predict. They're hard to see. You don't see the spin on the ball till it's too late. It's too hard to adjust. Pulled into left. Base hit. It's a good way to start. Here's the magic moonshot moment presented by Magic Window. Cassianos in the second. Took it up right over the 365 mark. I always look farther than 365 out there to me. Why well, you gotta hit it to the moon to get it out of there? Lead off man out for the Tigers here in the ninth. Swing and a miss. Melanson 51 of 53 last year in save opportunities. 51 leading the league. Just missed one ball and one strike. Well, with his appearance, pulled Melanson is pulled even with Tony Watson, most appearances. Little competition. That's likely to go back and forth all season long. Oh yeah. Going to be pretty close. Pulled right to the third baseman. They might get another play and they do. J.D. is doubled up. Two outs. Well we know that's a mistake. Down by three runs your run means nothing. Can't take off till you confirm. That's a double play. Here is Salta Lamakia. Last chance for the Tigers. Strike one to Salta Lamakia. Struck out is only at bat. That was back in the seventh. Bouncing ball foul first base side. That cutter that really gets to the lefties. Really bears in on their hands. Mariano Rivera was the king of the cutters. He rode that to what's going to be a Hall of Fame career. And now Melanson has gone 0 2. Swing and a miss, and he strikes him out to finish off the Tigers. In the ninth, no runs, they get a hit. Nobody left. Pittsburgh wins the opener in this series 7 4. We'll be back. 